God bless you. Um, my name is Patty Maffei, and I'm here to give you a message. And um, just give you a message. 2020 was the year I planned on divorcing my husband, but God. God did a miracle in my marriage. God did a miracle in me. The day I found out that my husband was unfaithful to me, my life turned upside down, and I was totally devastated, and I was angry, I was hurt, and I was broken. I wanted out, but the question in the back of my head was, what does God want? What was I going to do now? I didn't know. My husband and I separated, and the next few years I developed a relationship with God that I never would have imagined. I had always been a good Christian. I always did the right thing. I went to church. I did what I was supposed to do. I loved God. I have loved God all my life. And all I ever wanted was to please Him and to serve Him. And I did. That's what I did. I served God. I taught. I led. I worshipped. I was there. I was there. But so was God. God was always there with me. So why did this happen to me? Was my question. I always ask, why? Why, God? Why did this happen to me? So I started calling out to God like I had never called out to God before. And He was there. It's hard to explain to you if you haven't gone through something like this, but even in the midst of that hardship and that pain, God was there and I felt a hurt, but I also felt joy. I felt the presence of the Lord. He was so close to me. And I, I love that feeling. I never wanted that feeling to end. I just wanted to continue to be in God's presence. And even in that pain, I just, I just felt that closeness with God. Time was passing, and I felt a pressure to make a decision on getting a divorce. I would pray and tell God, God, if I want to do your will. What is your will? If this is your will, then I want to do your will. But you have to show me. You have to do something. Uh, what is your will? Every time I pray, God, I want to do your will. But I also I wanted to get a divorce. And if, and if you don't want that, then you're going to have to do something. You're going to have to change something. Because all I want is to get a divorce. But I would always pray, what's your will, God? Whatever it is, I'll do it. In the meantime, it seemed that everywhere I went, I saw bulletins that said, be still. Everything I listened to on the radio or at church, the preachings, the music, said, be still. Be still was the theme everywhere. And one day, a friend of mine and her husband, who is a pastor, they took me out to breakfast. And I mentioned that to them, that everywhere I went, it was be still. And he confirmed to me that that's what God wanted from me, to just be still, to not do anything, to just be still and wait until I got a different message. When he said that, I felt such relief. I felt like the pressure was off me, that I didn't have to make a choice. I didn't have to make the decision right now just to be still until God told me otherwise. And the next time I saw my husband, I said, I'm not going to divorce you. I'm just going to be still. If you want to divorce me, then you have to sign the papers. You have to bring me papers, but I'm not going to divorce you. And I decided at that time that I wouldn't divorce him until my youngest child turned 18. And that would have been this year, 2020. He turned he turned 18 and that's why this came about because I was thinking of that and I told my son this would have been the year that I got a divorce but look how God has done great things in our marriage God has done great things in my life and I give God all the honor and all the glory but at that time I did I felt no pressure I was just going to be still and wait on the Lord the next three years that we were separated uh, were not easy I felt shame I felt anger. I felt guilt. There's all these emotions. But I continued to trust in God. And I t continued my closeness with God. Which was amazing. In the meantime, God used me in different ways. I was asked to give conferences to the young people, to the ladies. And every time I just felt like I wasn't worthy. Like, why is God using me when this is happening? But I felt, I felt that's what God wanted me to do. And... And I was able, I was willing. And through all that, there was different things that I was learning myself. 
and I thank God for those opportunities. God is good. All along, I felt his loving arms, loving hands around me. And at the same time, my husband was going through his own experience and seeking God. And and he was very repentant. And he was pursuing me. He was pursuing me strongly. One day, when I got up to pray, like I did every morning, I got up to pray. I decided... And I dared myself to pray something different, something new, instead of whatever your will is, God. I decided to pray something different. Instead of telling God to do His will, I told God, okay. The next time that my husband asked me to get back together with him, to give him another chance, I'm going to say yes. And I said those things and surprised myself. Like, did I just say that? Wait, did I just let my guard down? <laughs> Did I just surrender? Am I surrendering? Yes, I surrendered. I was going to let my guard down. Is that what you want, Lord? God, is that what you want? You want me to surrender? Well, that had been God's will all along. He was just waiting for me to surrender my will. I understood that now. Of course, I understood. So the next time Sam asked me, I said yes. However, we didn't get back together immediately. We went a year for counseling, which is something that I highly recommend. It really, really helped us. Um, we worked really hard at it for a whole year. And um, that year was not easy. Like I said, we worked hard and we learned things about each other, things that we needed to change. And although it was not hard, God was with us. God was dealing with us. That year, I um, fell back in love with my husband. God is so merciful and so good that I feel that he allowed for that time. And my hus I fell back in love with my husband. In January of 2017, Sam asked me if I would be his wife again. And of course, by now you know that I said yes, right? Um, but the night before... We, well, we planned a ceremony, we planned uh, to renew our vows, and the night before the ceremony, uh, as I was going to bed, I felt an evil presence in my room. I felt this present was, presence was really angry, it was shifting all over my room, and I felt that he was angry because he was not able to destroy my marriage. He had not accomplished in destroying my marriage. And I started rebuking him in the name of Jesus. And it finally left. And then that's when I understood that the true culprit was the enemy, was the devil. He, he wanted to destroy my marriage. And I realized that that's what the enemy wants. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy marriages. That's what he comes to do. That's what he wants to do, especially Christian marriages. And he was angry because he was not able to destroy my marriage. But he knows that if he destroys a marriage that he destroys an entire family. And that's what he did not get away with this time. To God be the glory. God is so good. And he knows how to mend broken hearts. It didn't happen overnight for me. But he healed me. And he did a miracle in my life. And he did a miracle in my home, in my children. Thank you, Jesus. I learned many lessons during our separation. The lesson that was... The main lesson that I learned, of course, was that of forgiveness. Every day God forgives me, and I forgave my husband. And I choose to forgive him every day. Our marriage is not perfect. I'm not perfect. But God is perfect, and his love is perfect, and his love is sufficient. Perhaps many, some of you have been deeply hurt or wounded. Could be by a family member or a friend such a horrible and such a painful feeling. Jesus was hurt and betrayed also, but Jesus led by example and he forgave. If you're holding on to a hurt and have not forgiven, I challenge you today to choose to forgive. I know that that's one of the most difficult, the most hardest things to do is to forgive, but God will help you. And once you forgive, you will start healing 
you will start mending, you will start to live again, and you will have peace. The purpose that I gave this uh, message today, my testimony, first of all, is to give God all the honor and the glory. And second of all, is that perhaps by my message, my testimony, uh, it will encourage one of you to forgive and to do God's will. I love you. God bless you.